four minutes to go until the start of trading, and you've got a mixed market so far. S&Ps positive by three points. We take a look on a 15 basis. Early this morning, we're up at about 45.50. Europe opens, you trade lower. We jump back to that price point at about 8 a.m. this morning, and we've seen a little bit of negative action over about the last hour or so. We jump right over to Europe right now. You're talking about a Europe. DAX down one-tenth percent. FTSE basically flat. Calcarol positive by one-tenth percent over in Asia, the Nikkei is positive by a quarter percent. Shanghai positive by almost one tenth percent right now. Hang Seng positive by 2.1 percent over in Asia. Our market's pretty mixed to kick things off. Dow in negative territory right now. You get the Dow trading down 27 points right now. Jumping around to what else I got pulled up here. Uh, excuse me. Yes, we have Bitcoin. A little bit of volatility on Friday, man. Down to 44,000. We finish at about 46.5. Check out the action last night, Sunday evening, from 47.5 down to 46. We're sitting right there, down 400 bucks technically at 46,000. Crude catching another pop, 102.67. Uh, not good stories, just from a humanity perspective, coming out over the weekend. Be interesting to see what happens there. Uh, more sanctions potentially on the table. And there's only so much you can sanction until European energy and gas that they are buying from Russia is on the table. And that might be it. Uh, oil. Up another $3.38. We're back above $100. 102.64, the price for crude right now. Gold. Catch it a bit. Up $15 right now. Gold. Check out the action on gold. They were in the Tiger's Den last night. Uh saying, man, what's going on? You got gold in negative territory yet again, but guess what? Not so fast. Gold charges higher. We're up $15 on the session, up eight tenths percent at 1939. And we jump to notes and bonds. Right now, you're positive by four ticks right now in the 10 year. You're talking about a 10 year right now with a yield jumping over 2.37%. The yield on the 10 year, we're positive by four ticks right now. Well, you take a look at this thing. Now, we were already in quite a trend for lower prices and higher yields. This thing really breaks out of that trend on March 7th. You trade from 129, basically, down to 121, eight full ticks. We've bounced a bit. Uh, I've said it before. Even if you get a bounce up to 124, folks, that's just the 382 of this move that we had since March 7th. Not even a month ago that that thing began, uh, but nonetheless, somewhat near lows as we're coming into a Fed hiking cycle. It seems all but set in terms of economic data on Friday, non-farm payroll, strong data indeed, uh, and inflation will be the next one that we take our eyes on. CPI, I believe, coming out next week for CPI data. All right, jumping around to what we have going on, I'm going to kick things off with Mr. Elon Musk, and not the stock you'd think, but man, talk about the headlines. 9.2% uh, stake in Twitter. Be interesting to see how this shakes out in terms of what his goal is when you're worth hundreds of billions of dollars, you have opportunities that most people don't. Elon almost takes a 10% stake in Twitter. I believe that's about a two point something billion dollar position, $2.89 billion position. Now for some context, uh, what's that? One one hundredth of his net worth almost. Uh, that would be like somebody that's worth a million dollars taking a $10,000 stake in a company basically pennies and uh it's going to allow him some serious control and we'll see where he goes at least control in shaping the conversation not sure he has control of the company but he is going to have control of shaping the conversation when you have a nine percent passive stake okay the biggest shareholder of the company um hinting he might shake up the social media industry watch out folks twitter's rocking today uh musk 50 years old and uh just last uh two weeks ago talking about free speech uh of course twitter always in the press uh but nonetheless going to be interesting to see how that shakes out the announcement will be yet another major test for their new ceo who replaced jack dorsey after he unexpectedly resigned in november so you get the ceo stepping down in November, Dorsey, who started it, got a new CEO in there, and now he's going to deal with the, the maybe the greatest Twitter troll of them all, Elon Musk, taking almost a 10% stake, biggest shareholder in that. The company set ambitious goals for growth, including increasing annual revenue to $7.5 billion and 315 million daily active users by the end of 2023. And yeah, this thing's been... Uh, in a little bit of a slide, but nonetheless, we'll see where we go. Interesting stuff. Unclear what Musk is planning with his stake. The filing with the SEC shows the date of the event that triggered the disclosure was March 14th. The type of form used often indicates the investor isn't seeking to acquire control of a company or influence uh, who controls it. I would take issue with that 
considering he's obviously looking for influence if you just look at his Twitter page uh, in any recent capacity. But if you were long Twitter over the weekend, you're getting paid today, man. Check it out. You're going to pop to 47, okay? We were above 51. That's bringing us back to basically November. It's been quite a slide from $70 in October down to 31 bucks. Now, again, March 14th or so, Talk about 32 bucks there. I wonder where he was getting in, Mr. Elon Musk. Um, it's really remarkable when you know that he has the following he has. I mean, you have to know that he's not manipulating markets, but in trading markets, they're being manipulated because you have to know that you're going to take a 9% share and you're going to tell the world that that stock is just going to pop dramatically. And there it was this morning from under 40 to 51.20. Right now, you're up about $8, more than a 20% pop on Twitter shares. Let's just see how some of the other social media is. You got Facebook trading a little bit higher with the market right now. Snapchat a little bit higher as well. Uh, that's going to be an interesting one to see how it shakes out, to see what he plans to do with that 9.2%. Just from uh, a curiosity standpoint, I would not be in that equity. Uh, I definitely wouldn't be touching it without any defined risk. And options premium now probably through the roof. We'll see how that trades on the open. All right, let's jump around to what else we have going on. Starbucks. So, talking about uh, Starbucks, Howard Schultz, he takes back, whoops, there, there we go, the interim CEO role. Uh, we've talked to our man Kevin Hanks many times. He made the great point saying, man, what's going on? How do they have no succession line whatsoever where you have the CEO stepping down? The founder and chairman basically has to jump back in. He's had to do that before. Nonetheless, he has a pretty great track record to turn this company around. The market probably okay with that. We take a look at Starbucks shares for some con context here, SBUX. Now, they are trading lower, but that just may have to do with China or something going on. Uh, no, excuse me, that doesn't have to do. It has to do with the story I'm about to talk about right now, which is they're not doing buybacks anymore. Uh, up to 126 this year on whether it's the market, whether it's China, they do a lot of business in China, 116 down to 80, you're back to 91. Now they are suspending buybacks. We're uh, suspending its share repurchase program with Schultz at the helm. The decision comes as Starbucks faces a union push from um, its baristas, baristas, did not buy back any stock in fiscal 2021, but it recently committed to spending $20 billion on buybacks and dividends over the next three years. So much for that. Uh, that has the market trade lower. First day back at the helm kicked off with an announcement that they're suspending stock buybacks to invest back in operations. Here what I'll, here's what I'll say about this. This guy has turned this company around before. If you're a trader, yeah, that's an unfortunate development. If you're an investor, all right, I think there's nobody that I'd rather trust, and that's from a very far off, distant view of Starbucks, folks, than Howard Schultz. So maybe he's got a good plan. We'll take a look at it again as we come back from the break. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. 
For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps positive by six points right now. Jumping back to Starbucks real quick. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, Schultz only in there on the interim role. They talk about unions in here. But in general, folks, I would guess that he is just making sure that they are financially secure right now at a period of extreme uncertainty and volatility. Uh, many times, you know, there's so many times. I mean, share buybacks are just dividends, folks. They're a quick cash out. You really believe in a company and they need to spend some money to compete. You want them to spend that money if you're a long-term shareholder. Uh, I've said it before, Walmart needs to spend a lot of money right now to compete with Amazon. They're not doing the job. I've gotten deliveries from Sam's. I've gotten deliveries from Walmart. Uh, subpar up to where Amazon is. That's an instance where you don't want short-term profits. You want the company to invest if you're a shareholder in the longer-term perspective. I imagine there is a reason, folks, that that is happening, and we are coming into an extreme period of uncertainty. And Starbucks has a tremendous amount of business in China. So with you know, China zero COVID policy going poorly, to say the least, that could be contributing to part of that as well. But nonetheless, $20 billion in buybacks not happening under his reign. And it will be interesting to see how that changes in terms of he is going to have a role in choosing his successor, folks. So if he thinks that buybacks are not a good idea right now, that at least is going to be in play with whoever's coming in after him. All right, jumping from Starbucks to Nike. How about Tiger? We got uh, the Masters coming up. Tiger, still not sure if he's going to be playing. He's trying to get it uh, together. He's still dealing with some nagging injuries. Uh, but he's not wearing Nike shoes. What is up with that? Speculation swirling as to why Tiger wasn't wearing the iconic Nike swoosh on his feet. He's wearing Foot Joy. Uh, instead, wearing a pair of black Foot Joy Premier Series Packard golf shoes. Uh, they're owned by another publicly traded company, not familiar, Akushnet. Uh, yeah, affiliated since going pro in 1996. 1996. Uh, up in Boston, one of his amateur championships, what did he win? Two or three amateur championships, uh, already making names for himself before he went pro. One of those taking place at uh, Wollaston Golf Club up in Milton, Massachusetts. So he was up there when he was, man, 14, 15 years old. Crazy. What do you think about how far back that is? Um, like golf fans around the world, we're delighted to see Tiger back on the course. Nike said in a statement, incredible athlete, phenomenal to see him returning to the game at this level. And, uh, yeah, and they got no comment from Foot Joy. That's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. He basically built Nike into the powerhouse. They were in golf. Everything went away, of course. Um, but, yeah, interesting to see how that plays out with no real announcement. Uh, you know there's something going on in the background with that much money at play. All right, let's jump around to some of the other equities that are trading with moves this morning. We're going to jump down the line. You got the China stocks moving higher. Seems like China might be trying to get them the ability to be listed. Not sure that's going to happen, though, man. I mean, you know, there's a lot going on in the accounting of those Chinese firms. And uh, I don't know. Seems like that seems to be the market consensus. I still wouldn't trust them, no matter what, if they're putting it out. That's the tough part of that. We go over JD.com. 
I mean, you, you want to talk about some accelerations off those lows, man. From 41 to 59 this morning, though, you're trading back to 62. We take a look at Baba, Alibaba. From 73 at those uh, lows that we had March 15th this morning, you're going to open about 115. Now, I talked about this last week. If you're looking for a trade, man, I mean, this channel line we got going in Baba, put it on a three-year weekly. You're talking about going back a year and a half ago, October of 2020. Well-defined. Yeah, you got a little bit below it, a little bit above it. Uh, but keep your eye on it. And we're still just right at that price point. Back to a daily to see the price action we're talking about right now. Uh, 115, still well below. You're talking about 118 is the upper boundary right now of that channel line for Alibaba shares. But they're all trading a little bit higher on the prospect that uh, China proposing revised confidentiality rules regarding audit oversight. That's just a tough one for me to uh, think that, that the, the Chinese leaders over there are going to relax confidentiality rules regarding audit oversight. Nonetheless, so Hertz. Yeah, I think I got this one pulled up here as well. Check out this one. They're going all in, man. And I think it's the right plan. Hertz plans electric car fleet expansion with 65,000 pole stars. The five-year deal will give renters an alternative to Tesla. Uh, they're going to buy 65,000 electric vehicles from Polestar over the next five years. A bet that its renters are both EV curious and eager to drive brands beyond Tesla. Yeah, I would say that they're right, man. I mean, everybody, uh, it's usually not an enjoyable experience thinking about the car that you're going to get when you go to rent one, right? Well, they're changing that. Um, so the car is from Polestar. That's an all-electric automaker controlled by Volvo. Uh, and its owner will join some 100,000 Tesla vehicles that Hertz said it's buying in a $4.2 billion purchase announced in the fall. They got an interim CEO, said Tesla was the only company that could produce EVs at scale. Well, not so much the case. Uh, bulk deals give the rental giant a steady stream of some of the most coveted battery-powered cars. Yeah, I mean, how are you going to keep up, man? There's only so many electric cars out there that they're pushing out. You can't buy that many fleets. I mean, the, the production goals only call for an output of 290,000 EVs a year by 2025. That's Polestar. But they're going to take... 65,000 of those vehicles over the next five years, which is their whole delivery vehicles for this year currently. It's a lot of vehicles. Uh, the Tesla partnership fueled a more than 30% spike in the car renter shares. Yeah, Hertz has been one of the craziest stories over the pandemic. They go BK and they trade in positive territory and the people that bought that stock when the stock was going into bankruptcy actually made money. Because guess what? Uh, no stronger position than coming out of the pandemic as a rental car company when everybody wants to rent cars. Sticker price for the Polestar 2, 45.9, meaning the deal would generate almost $3 billion in revenue if Hertz pays at or close that price. I mean, Tesla said they weren't giving them a deal. Many times, these companies, it's not like the fleet vehicles of Toyota or Chevy or whatever it is. They just don't have that many cars. They can't give them huge discounts when they don't have the type of supply that would allow them to price cut for discount because they have to sell the cars anyway and they could probably sell them anyway because they're producing so few cars nonetheless that's where the industry is going and how are you going to compete right how do the other companies compete hurts separating themselves as the premium brand that they kind of are known as of now and uh kudos to them for getting it done because anybody could have done it takes billions to do it but they're separating themselves yet again they have always been the premier rental car company and it seems like they're doing it yet again, even as electric vehicles take off. Okay, jumping down the line here. So a couple I wanted to get to. Logitech and Crocs. So Logitech gets an upgrade from buy, excuse me, to buy from neutral at Goldman Sachs. Recent strong financial performance from the maker of computer mice, keyboards, and other peripheral devices. Logitech's a little bit higher, and then we're going to jump to Crocs. So Crocs is a little bit lower. Loop Capital downgraded to a hold from buy, slash the price target to 80 from 150. Sentiment on the stock has shifted, putting it in the COVID winner category. If you've watched Fast Market, folks, uh, from TD Ameritrade Network, our man Kevin Hanks, Tom White, outstanding program at noon Eastern time. Kevin Hanks, not a personal fan of the Crocs brand. Uh, Man, you talk about that one, man. From 183 in November down to 66, but this thing has had quite a run. You put it on a three-year weekly. You're talking about COVID lows at eight bucks. You're com talking about coming into COVID at 40 bucks. Okay, out of curiosity, 
What are we talking about? You're sitting right at the 618. I love when that happens, folks. You're also to an area where you consolidated. This is a weekly chart. So you're talking about two to three months in consolidation from the beginning of 2021 in February. You break out of that consolidation, the late part in April. You're up to 183. You're back to the 618 of 75 bucks. You're a couple bucks lower to 73. Now they revise their price target to 80 from 150 while you're trading at 73. Stay tuned, folks. We're going to finish with Crocs. We're going to look at Logitech. I'm going to pull up Nike, uh, excuse me, Starbucks one more time as well. We'll be right back. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other tigers and tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open, and you got the S and P's opening things up. Two points right now. Nasdaq 100 positive by 46. The Dow negative by 73. <clears throat> Jumping right back to Starbucks real quickly. So I'm going to pull up Logitech. I'm going to pull up Crocs as well. Those stocks right back to their 618. And folks, if you're looking at Starbucks, all right, yeah, you are negative by 3.6 percent today. Buybacks not happening. Not a huge move. Now this is a weekly. All right, you had quite the move yes uh, last week where you traded from a low of 86 up to 92, closes out at 91.49. You basically give it back this week. Uh, you did trade down to that 618. That's what I'll say, 79.13, about $80. The nice area of that $80 area in Starbucks correlates right to the area that you had a little bit of resistance in 2020. You're back to that area. I mean, remarkable, right? Starbucks, back to an area that you were trading in in April of 2020 on that flash low. But nonetheless, if you're looking to get in Starbucks, uh, 
Not sure you'd necessarily begin it right now. Got the market sitting at 45.38, but you could begin to scale in, and $80 would be a very attractive area for Starbucks. Logitech's looking good, too. I mean, you got a pullback right at that 618 correlates right to the area that you pulled back a little bit in 2020 as well. You're back to that area of about 73 bucks. Now Logitech is getting a bid of 4.2%. They've got a couple upgrades recently though. Maybe it was the beginning of January uh, 24th that they caught a bid. Let's put it on a daily because they have gotten a couple nice accelerations on this equity. No, that was on their earnings on January. Okay. Maybe it was back on February 24th where they traded up $5 or so. There's been some big market moves as well, but a couple different analysts out there really putting some good calls on Logitech. And uh, yeah, you take a look at where we are. Always nice when you line up on a nice 618. At least you have a trading plan because you trade below this and you better believe that 50 bucks is in play and you're trading at 75 bucks, that's a 33% pullback, but it was a straight shot, man, from 31 bucks up to 140. You've given back a 618 of that, you're sitting right at that price level, and you got analysts upping the ante on Logitech shares. Uh, now, for Crocs, right there again, yet again, right? There's your Crocs action. You're sitting right at a 618 of 74 bucks, almost to the tick of where you are. You can see you're down 2.3% on Crocs right now. You were trading at 183, and again, though, you are into a previous area that is possible support or resistance turned into support. In this instance, you're in an area that you chopped around in from about February to April. Now, here's what I'll say again. Maybe you scale in. Maybe you scale in and you take a, a stop if you don't want to hold this thing because if you trade below this price level, pretty similar action for Crocs. Maybe you're trading right down to the 786, which is the beginning of 2020. Puts you at about $44 for Crocs. The 786 is 45 and you're sitting right at the 618 right now, $74 for Crocs. All right, as we say that, market's rolling over a bit. S&P is now negative by two. Jumping around to some of the other headlines I had pulled up here before we jump around. Uh, Where's our man, Jamie Dimon? There he is, Dimon. Now, he's just speaking what we should all be understanding, folks. How about a confluence of inflation? The Ukraine war may dramatically increase risk ahead for the U.S. Excuse me. I would say that it has already increased the risks, okay? Whether those risks play out is another instance. Whether those risks become reality is another instance. But the risks are already there, folks. The confluence of everything going on, okay, that you have a war going on that is impacting energy prices uh, and also in impacting food prices dramatically, okay? Whether it's wheat, right? Whether it's some of the oils I've been hearing about, what is it, sunflower oil or one of the oils that they control. Um, a lot of different parts of our food chain remarkably coming from Russia or Ukraine. All of that added on top of the imbalances that are currently in play because of COVID, you better believe it's adding to it. So JP Morgan identified three forces that are likely to shape the world over the next several decades. A U.S. economy rebounding from COVID, high inflation that will usher in an era of rising rates, and Russia's invasion of Ukraine and the resulting humanitarian crisis. I'll add on to that. Russia's invasion of Ukraine and the shifting of balance in Europe from where they get their energy. That's going to be something that plays out for decades, okay? Uh, the rebounding from COVID, hopefully that doesn't play out from decades, as in hopefully we re rebound over the next year or two and get over some of these imbalances. Hopefully the high inflation doesn't play out for decades. But Europe and their dependence on Russian energy will change for decades. We'll see if it changes after that, but it is going to change. It's already changing. Um, and the stories of... War crimes, massacres out of Buka, is that uh, how you pronounce it? Just very, very dramatic, very sad from a humanity perspective. And at some point, it will be on the table. You know, Europe, Germany, they've resisted the need to stop buying Russian energy because that would actually hurt themselves more because they rely on it so much, which is just a head scratcher. Uh, but nonetheless, everybody has their breaking point. And boy, you see more scenes like that, just potentially civilians getting shot and killed and wiped out, uh, genocide, whatever you want to call it, man. Um, just wiping out civilians in, in is the allegation. You know, we'll say it lightly. Yeah, everybody has their breaking point. So oil higher this morning, that is going to play out for a long time. And yes, the risks are obviously elevated when you've got inflation off the charts and uh, everything else on top of it. Okay, what else we got going on? 
Elon is in the news not just for his Twitter aspirations. And while we say that, let's jump to Twitter real quick and see how they're trading on the open with uh, the new largest shareholder, Mr. Elon Musk. There's a pop for you. Now, again, keeping in mind, you're just back to where we were, folks, which is basically the bottom of the area of 2021. But, man, Elon getting in on some good price action for Twitter at 32, 31 bucks. wonder where he got all that price action in terms of where he actually bought. Twitter's up to 48, up 23 percent, jumping over to Tesla shares. Basically flat. Now we pull up a 15 minute. You were higher. You sell off a little bit on the open. Tesla uh, deliveries going well. Shipments better than feared was one Web Bush analyst. First quarter is exceptionally dis difficult is how Musk surmised it. They were higher. They delivered. Excuse me. They shipped. OK, they shipped 310 thousand vehicles now here's the tweet because i believe they they made 305 or something something like that let's see what they did here we go so they delivered 310,000 cars worldwide uh slightly edged out expectations so they were they were looking for 309,158 cars shipped how do you how do you peg it to the actual vehicle you know they're not looking for 309,000 they're looking for 309,158 vehicles uh and musk edges that out by less than a thousand but they got it done uh, and where did they make? Come on. I had the number of vehicles they actually produced, which I believe was 305. Nonetheless, there it is. The company produced 305,000 vehicles for the quarter. So they ship out just above what they had produced there. And nonetheless, strong numbers for Tesla. They're trading flat right now, but Tesla has had quite the acceleration recently. You put this thing back on a daily. You talk about an acceleration, man, with the market. From March 15th at 756, you trade up to 1100. I'm going to back off the longer term. I'm going to back this off since we're way above that price level. And just looking at possible moves on Tesla, you're talking about 977, 100 bucks below where we're at right now. And that's just a 382 in a positive move higher. I mean, some of these moves. As we come into this break right now, you got ARC. I was talking to some friends about ARC, man. Boy, quite the sell off from 124 down to 51. You back this up for the three year weekly to get the 159 high from 2021. Yeah, you got to bounce, man, but you got to bounce off some pretty small numbers, 69 bucks, but you're up 2.5%. NASDAQ catching a bit up 100. Apple shares up 1.2% right now. Look at that pop. Stay tuned, folks. Be right back in three minutes. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. 
Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the FANG stocks popping, man. Look at this open on Google. Google up 1.6% right now. We just traded up 28.10 to 28.60. I brought up Apple before the break. Apple's up 1.2% right on the open. These stocks accelerating higher. Uh, Microsoft shares up about 1.4% right now. Uh, and you got the NASDAQ 100 catching a bid. We got the S&Ps flat. You got the Dow off 140. And they get the NASDAQ 100 now up 8 tenths percent. Crude's up 4 bucks to 103.26 right now. And we jump to notes and bonds. Uh, we got basically flat action in the 10-year pulling back. We were up at 122.12. Just like that, we're at 122.06 right now on the 10-year. Uh, jumping around to Tiger. I mentioned Tiger. And they're talking about, uh, as I had mentioned, Tiger with the that he was in Melton, Mass. for the Wollaston Country Club. Looked it up. 1992, he was there. He was 12 years old. Uh, he won his second U.S. Let me get it right. Make sure I'm doing it. Yes, 1992. So I'm looking at it. He won his second U.S. Junior Amateur. Now, what's interesting here is here's an article from the L.A. Times, okay? Dated August 2nd, 1992, almost 30 years ago. There you go. Uh, Tiger fights back to win the junior title in golf. Two holes down with five to play. I mean, this guy's got drama all his life, man. Um, just, just, I wanted to bring it up because it's amazing. We all forget, basically, how great Tiger is, man, in terms of what he's done. Six times, okay, six times he won the USGA title. He won it three times as the junior amateur champion, okay? 1992 was the second year that he won the USGA amateur junior champion, okay? And with this article I was looking at, they, they look at the six people, six men that he beat on his way. Um, Mark Wilson was one of them in 1992. Ryan Armour, Trip Cooney, Buddy Marucci, and Steve Scott. So those were the six people, but he won three amateurs for the juniors and then went on to win the three amateurs and then went pro. 12-shot uh, victory at the Masters and a 15-shot victory at the U.S. Open. Just some of his major titles. 15-shot victory at the U.S. Open, 12-shot victory at the Masters. It seemed normal when Tiger was doing it, but to beat an entire field by 12 or 15 shots, uh, just crazy, pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, so that, that was... 1992, Milton, Massachusetts at Wollaston Golf Club. Uh, he birdied the par 5 16th hole to even the match and won on the 18th hole with a bogey 5. Uh, interesting. Six times, and uh, nobody had even come back to back for the amateurs, they said. Something like since 1971 prior to that. Nonetheless, thought it was interesting. Can't believe he was at Wollaston Golf Club 30 years ago. I remember that. Uh, my mom got me a... Autographed signature of Tiger, man. Where is that one from 30 years ago? All right, jumping back to the market. Where do we go to? Let's kick things off. What are we talking about uh, in terms of what we have coming up this week? So we got Fed minutes. We're going to have some earnings coming out as well. Pulling up the calendar in terms of what we have happening. We got some of the companies. 
excuse me, we're going to get FOMC minutes, FOMC minutes on Wednesday. Okay, so that'll be one to keep your eye on, man. Uh, seems like it's going to be all eyes towards potentially 50 basis points uh, coming at you. In terms of earnings, we do have Conagra on Thursday. We get Constellation Brands on Thursday as well. Uh, but we're in a little bit of hiatus before the banks kick things off in a couple weeks. We jump over to Conagra, C-A-G as their symbol, I believe. A little bit of a drop off. So this is interesting action, man. We got the Dow selling off big. You got growth stocks accelerating higher. It's not like yields have moved dramatically. But nonetheless, growth stocks really catching a bid right now as you get the Dow pulling back. I mean, look at Conagra, down 1.7% right there. We jump to Constellation, as I said. Constellation getting a drop off of about a percent to 231 from 238. Look at this action, man. Wonder what's driving that one. What is going on with Constellation? Uh, here we go. Morgan Stanley adjusts Constellation Brands target to 294 from 299. That's pretty. Yeah, no huge. Single class, no huge action. Now, Constellation, their earnings, yes, they are. They're going to be out Thursday, about an $8 stock. Now, Constellation, they make a lot of good wine. They make Corona beer. I do have some Constellation retirement account. You put this thing on a longer-term chart, back to where you were in October of 2020, right? This area, uh, we've chopped around to the 302 twice. If you're looking to get into Constellation, keep that one on your chart. You're talking about 212 right now. Constellation's at 230 right now, high of 258 back in the beginning of the year. Uh, nice area of about 212 if you get back down, maybe even 210 on Constellation if you're looking to get into it, that that thing has found a bid going back to the beginning of 2021, basically, and they do have exposure to the cannabis stocks as well. Speaking of cannabis stocks, oh, I may sneeze. Hold on. Excuse me. Okay. Um, allergy season still in full bloom in Florida, if you're not aware of it. Uh, Constellation. So, uh, cannabis legalization. We'll see if it plays out, folks. But, man, we do have some Constellation in my newsletter, Rocket Equities and Options. We got into it basically at where it's trading at right now. Uh, let me go back 10 days to, to get the exact. We'll go back 20 days. I think we got into it uh, March 23rd or March 22nd. Some decent action. Okay, that all accelerated higher on the potential news of a House, just just the plan of the House having a vote on legalization. So that vote does pass. I think they call it the Moore Act, um, something about legalization. Here's what I'll say, folks, all right? Things get partisan. Both parties have good ideas on, on different fronts in some capacity. I do not understand why Republicans think that pot is the devil and should be illegal. I mean, how this lines up on partisan walls, I don't understand. I don't. It's a shame. You got a bunch of people, you know, in jail for, for nonviolent pot offenses. Uh, I've gone through medical cannabis like in Florida. It's basically just the privilege of paying to make pot legal. You got people that are poor that are getting locked up all over the state that just can't pay the fees to a doctor for your prescription, right? You got to pay for a prescription. You got to pay for your doctor to give you the prescription. You got to pay uh, a yearly fee to get your cannabis license renewed. Uh, there's all these fees that you just got to pay for something to become legal. And if you can't pay it, then it's illegal and the state will lock you up. That doesn't sound uh, like anything that I want to be a part of, folks, and it's unfortunate how it's coming down. Nonetheless, back to the pot stocks, they have a long way to go. All right, it passes in the House, and as we've said, good luck in the Senate right now. We'll see if that happens, and even if it gets to the president's desk, what I'll say is President Biden, he's he's one of, one of the Democrats that is uh, not a fan of this as well. Or, or at least is is uh, further off of the spectrum than, than wanting to legalize cannabis. It's a bummer. You know, the trend is, is going in the right direction, but it's just a bummer how long some of these things take to sort themselves out. And yeah, cannabis stocks, we're in this thing. This is a trade. We were looking for some short-term action. We're still riding it out, um, but be careful in this thing because there is the possibility it goes back to zero, and I think we put our stop somewhere below the previous lows, 549, something like that, if you're in this equity, because I wouldn't let it go to zero because it's possible, folks. Uh, anytime you got an equity, even if you believe in the industry, that you're trading like this, that you're trading like this from 5650 down to five bucks, you better believe that zero might be in play. All right, stay tuned, folks. We got one more segment. You got the S&Ps up five. You got the growth stocks rocking, man. Let's put this back on a daily. You got the NASDAQ 100 up 1% right now. You got Apple up 1.6% right now. Apple making a pop towards three trillion yet again. Microsoft shares up 1.6%. Google shares up 1.6%. 2.1%. We'll be right back. 
Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, amazing market right now. You get the S&Ps up nine points, just jumping around. I pulled up all the FANG stocks. Amazon up more than a percent right now as well. Some of the stocks have really been hammered. DraftKings up 6% right now. Uh, that's a stock. I do have some slight exposure, folks, talking about retirement. We are not in this in my newsletter, but I'm looking at it, man. Uh, you're talking about DraftKings. I've talked about it before, okay? We're talking about a company right now valued at, come on, $8 billion. They have a substantial upside, folks, if you have a long-term perspective. The other one that does jump out as well is Roku. All right, you're talking about a company that was below 100 bucks at one point. You're now valued at $17.7 billion, okay? Yeah, you did get below 100 bucks as recently as March 14th. You're at 131. $17 billion, folks. The reach they have controlling the top set market to streaming, very attractive area to be in to control those avenues to streaming, considering uh, the pocketbooks of the streaming giants out there. Uh, jumping around. So what else we have going on? Folks, I encourage you to get into the Tiger's Den. If you haven't yet, the new YouTube Tiger's Den over at Discord, right on the front page of TFNN. Got a couple hundred people in there already. Let's see how many we got live in there right now, folks. If you're not in there right now, we got 84 members live right now, let alone the people that signed up. That is live, active, in the room as we speak, chatting. Uh, and what we also have coming up next week, 
Our man Basil Chapman, he's coming up next for the Tiger Technicians Hour, folks. He's going to be doing a live subscriber webinar there. This is for opening call subscribers only, okay? Not to confuse the two. You do need to be a member of the opening call to attend Basil's subscriber webinar, okay? The cool part about it, though, is we are going to be doing that webinar in Discord, all right? An outstanding platform and piece of software. Basil's going to be able to basically share his screen, interact with all of his subscribers. The cool part about it, folks, is there's no more downloading Hotcom. There's none of that, all right? If you're not in the Tiger's Den, you will need to download Discord and create an app. But if you're already in the Tiger's Den, if you're already in our Discord, it's as simple as we tag you as an opening call subscriber and you are just clicking a different button. If you're in there already, folks, you can see the section that's ready. Basil Live Trading Webinar. There's going to be a chat area for that webinar. There's going to be uh, a voice channel for that webinar. You got to sign up for it. It's a week from Wednesday. Okay, but check it out and check out the Tiger's Den no matter what for a dollar, folks. And check out Basil coming up next with a positive market, man. S&P's up 16, NASDAQ up 177.